Hello, my name is Craig Peters. I'm a product manager at JFrog. Today I'm going to share with you a short demonstration of using JFrog Artifactory with HashiCorp Nomad. JFrog Artifactory is an enterprise universal repository manager that enables you to have tight control over your packages, third party and open source that you depend upon. We support many different package types from CocoaPods for your mobile development to C, C++ and Conda to Ruby gems, Docker images, Helm charts for Kubernetes, Go, Python, PyPy, and so forth. As a repository manager, you have centralized control over storage, cloud storage, or shared storage, uh, and access control for your repositories. Have manage multiple repositories so you can manage the security of your packages uh, through the software development lifecycle all the way from initial development and through QA, staging, and production. I'm going to show you how we work together with HashiCorp Nomad, and Nomad is a very lightweight and general purpose application and service scheduler for distributed clusters of all kinds. You can distribute applications onto bare metal or to VMs. To demonstrate, we'll use this simple application I created that uh, shows a couple of logos and some simple text. So let's edit that to include my name, presented by myself. We'll save it, uh, commit those changes to the Git project, push those changes up to GitHub. And what I've done is I've just configured a simple GitHub webhook to trigger a Jenkins build to do the build itself of uh, what is essentially a small job application using Gradle. So the Jenkins job is kicking off here, as you can see. The Jenkins job uses uh, the Artifactory Jenkins plugin and uses Gradle to resolve all the dependencies from Artifactory. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. That's an important point that we're using all of the dependencies resolved from Artifactory so we know what we're exactly we're including in our application. After it's done doing the Gradle build, the next Jenkins job kicks off a Docker image build, does an image test to make sure that that Docker image is valid after it's actually pushed that Docker image up into Artifactory as a Docker registry. It's doing a pull, make sure it's good and runs a test. Then we do an x-ray scan to identify any vulnerabilities and licenses that are included in those. We promote the Docker image from a local to a staging Docker registry. And then uh, it kicks off the Nomad job to uh, push that Docker image uh, into our staging environment. So our staging environment is just simply a Docker engine that's running uh, on, a, on a nearby server here. So you can see that Nomad's been kicked off. It uh, retired the old version. Now we refresh and we see, hey, the changes we made to, uh, to the HTML file are, are reflected in the app. So let's dig now a little bit under the covers uh, as to what we saw here. So taking a look here at Artifactory, we'll look at the builds that are being managed by Artifactory. So in Jenkins, you can see here with the Jenkins agent is the one that is managing this build. The build consists of a number of modules. You can see all of the history of builds I've had here, and we'll take a look at the web services uh, module. In here, I can see the artifacts that the build created, my XML, my POM, and my WAR file. Each of those uh, has a link to the actual object that uh, was created as a part of that build, the specific version of that object. And then below, I can see all of the dependencies. I uh, have links exactly to where those were resolved from. You can see that those are JSON or uh, resolved dependencies that are actually cached locally. So Artifactory acts as a remote repository, uh, caching those remote repositories locally for use and repeatable resolution. So the next time I go to build it, even if something has happened to the remote repo, I can always resolve it from my Artifactory and I have a archival kind of audit trail of exactly how that was built. 
So now what we can also see is in the Docker image build, you can see uh, my manifest file and all of the layers that were created by the Docker build and all the, de the dependent layers that the Docker image uh, had to resolve to do the build since we're actually layering the application layer on top of a base layer with the uh, operating system dependencies as you'll see when we do the x-ray scan. Here I'm also showing that I've captured all of the environment variables in the build. This allows me to do powerful things like compare one build against the other. So if one build worked and another didn't, I can see what changed exactly. Not only from the artifacts that were created, the dependencies that were resolved, which ones of those are the same and which ones were have changed or been updated, and which environment variables changed over time. So we, I could do the forensics to understand what really happened uh, in my build. Now we'll take a look at the radical visibility that X-Ray gives you into the contained packages within the package. In this case, we're going to look at the Docker scan that X-Ray accomplished. So here we can see a list of all of the security issues that X-Ray identified in the Docker image. This is actually a fairly complex Docker image, so you can see here that uh, the war file actually includes Apache struts. And in Apache struts, we know there are a bunch of vulnerabilities. In this case, I can see that it's a Maven package type that was included in my Docker image. I can see that it's critical severity. I can see when the package was created and what CV is associated with it. I can see the impact, what other uh, images, Docker images or builds contain that. So X-Ray does deep recursive scanning. It understands that it was built in a particular uh, image uh, build step, uh, the Docker image, the layer of the Docker image, which war file in that Docker image contained this package. And then I can navigate to the package itself to identify all the other issues that might be coming with that specific version of that package. So here in X-Ray, I can see all of the security violations. I can see it, in this case, Struts is very simple. It only has one license, the Apache 2.0 license. I can see the latest version, and I can see which version I'm using. So that gives me the information that I need as a developer to know how I should update my projects. So here what we've done is we've looked at Artifactory, we've looked at Nomad, and if you want to try all of this out yourself, it's actually very straightforward. You can go to the JFrog product page and click on the free trial button. From there, you can choose whether you want to get a license so you can install Artifactory yourself and apply the 30-day trial license, or you can choose one of our cloud offerings and run it on any of the three big clouds. For HashiCorp Nomad, you simply go to their page, click Get Started, and it'll walk you right through it. Super easy, super fun. Give it a try.